Okay, you shut your mouths, okay? That girl isn't just a demon. That's my little sister, so don't hurt her. <laughs> don't nobody give a f about your sister. Oh my god, like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another play-by-play, -play, man. I know it's been a minute. I, I know I be saying that frequently, but trust me, y'all. I, I don't be trying to take these long-ass breaks. But alas, life happens. Anyway, so a little backstory on this video before we start. Um, A while back, I told y'all that I'd be covering the entirety of Attack on Titan Season 4 Part like 35, and that video would likely be over an hour long. And well, if you've been rocking with me for long enough, you know that my longest video to date is nowhere near that length. Like, I, I already know that when it comes to making that AOT video, I'm gonna hate every second of it, so I, I figured why not just expose myself. What? Bro, let me finish my sentence. Anyway, I figured let me expose myself to making a long ass video. Thus, here we are. I decided to cover Demon Slayer in this one because not only is it a show I've never really talked about on here, it's also about half the length of Attack on Titan. So although this video is going to be top tier because you know that's how we do, this video is also going to serve as kind of a, a practice video for the video from hell. So without further ado, let's go. Fuck, I don't want to do this shit, man. But it has to be done. Roll the fucking intro. <laughs> Meet Tanjiro Kamado, the eldest of five children. His mother is pretty run-of-the-mill, you know, anime mom type shit, and his dad essentially has, like, stage four cancer. Okay, maybe not cancer, but he, he's still sick as fuck, though. Tanjiro here is a pretty hard-working guy, you know? They make their money selling literal backwoods. <laughs> nah, but for real, though, imagine if that man was really selling weed. Hello there, my name is Tanjiro Kamado, and I was wondering if you were straight on gas. Alright, anyway, Mr. Breadwinner here is going around town selling to his customers, and once he finishes moving the product, he begins to head home. But he gets stopped by some old guy who is like, Oh, the demons! If you're out at night, they'll come and get you! You better stay here for the night and head back at sunrise! Demons? Huh, you're funny, bro. There's absolutely no way these things exist, and are they're only fairy tales, you know, but I, I do have a ways to go. It is cold as shit out here, so I'll take you up on that offer. Good night! Demons, yeah, right. As if I'd fall for some stupid shit like that. Scary ass. Matter of fact, next time I hit the block, I'm gonna take Nezuko with me to show him he was. Oh shit, he was dead ass. Honestly, man, y'all should have seen this one coming. This is the oldest trick in the book. Everything was going way too perfect. Bro thought he was gonna have a normal life. Hell nah, nigga. This is anime. What can go wrong will go wrong. Now, I ain't gonna lie though, this one is kind of crazy because these was just some regular ass people too. Like, it'd be one thing if they had special powers like Naruto's parents or something like that. But but these was like civilians, you know what I'm saying? Imagine you minding your business and then randomly somebody just shows up and murks you like off screen too. For what? I'm not gonna lie to y'all though, Tanjiro's family ain't all the way innocent if we being honest. Like, I, I know this is set in the 1800s or something like that, so it kind of makes sense why they are where they are. But like, why the fuck do you live in the middle of the forest? That's literally asking to get put on a t-shirt. And, and mind you, there's a whole ass civilization right at the bottom of the mountain, but these two is like, nah, fuck that, let's go live in the woods. So, so if you ask me, that's just natural selection doing his thing right there. So apparently the only person that wasn't dead was Nezuko because, you know, why the hell not? So Tanjiro decides to try and get her some help from the village at the bottom of the mountain and she turns into a demon while they're doing that. So now Tanjiro is trying to not get murked by his sister. Shit is not looking clean at all. But then out of nowhere, this guy shows up and snatches Nezuko quicker than CD Lamb snatched the phone from his girl at draft night and was like, don't worry, bro, I'm gonna take care of Yo, this. Yo, chill, chill, that's my sister. Nigga, do it look like I give a fuck right now. This is a demon, and I'm a demon slayer, so let me do my fucking job, yo. Then Tanjiro pretty much does what I think anyone would do in this situation, which is go to war about their family, which I can respect. You know what I'm saying? It is a W thought process. I rock with it, but my man's right here said, you gonna need to fuck with a chiropractor. Move around, cuz, before I sleep you too. Wait a minute, where the fuck is- Oh, shit! Nah, I'm playing. That motherfucker dodged that shit. Anyway, Nezuko apparently was able to gain control of herself and then started defending her brother, but we, we kind of don't see how that plays out. The camera just kind of cuts to her being asleep with some bamboo tied to her face. I, I mean, I, I know he ain't rock her to sleep, so I'm guessing he slept her ass. I don't know. Anyway, bro was like, all right, little nigga, you got heart. So if you want to survive in this world, I know a guy that teaches people how to fight. Go check in with him. W wait a second. What's your name? None of your fucking business. You never saw me, all right? It's Giyu Tomioka. Wait, you just said- Get up and get moving. All right, fine. Mean ass. 
So now Nezuko and Tanjiro are on their way to check in with Uro Kodaki. But on the journey, they get caught up at some random house because Tanjiro ain't like what he was smelling. So now they're face to face with a demon and he tries to get shit cracking. But Tanjiro got the 99 overall reaction time. So he cut bro up a little bit. But the demon was not having none of that shit. He got right on top and started choking bro. It's not looking too good for Tanjiro right now. But then out of nowhere, Nezuko free kicks this man's head clean off. Then kick the rest of his body for good measure. But hey, one thing about this show, shit is convenient as fuck. Look at this right here demon gets up magically grows arms out of his neck and his body starts moving on his own like what now he's running the ones with two people at once despite being one person tanjiro kind of holding his own but like check this shit out right here bro oh my god bro is this not child abuse bro is throwing haymakers at a 12 year old what the fuck nah i ain't gonna cap tanjiro might be brother of the year for this one demon was beating the shit out of his sister do you know what this man did in response to that bro he speared this nigga off of a cliff as god God is my witness, he has no regard for his own life. Nezuko caught him though. Now Tanjiro trying to kill confirm, but then he stopped by Uro Kodaki and they head to his spot afterwards. I ain't gonna lie, bro. A full sprint all the way there is crazy because this man got a whole person on his back. But anyway, they get there and he got bro doing conditioning immediately. And as someone that used to play basketball for like three fourths of his life, I can relate to this bullshit right here, bro. Uro Kodaki got the same energy as that one coach that make you run and do all this other bullshit before you even touch a ball. Unrelated, but in middle school, bro, my coach used to have us running a mile and an exercise on this steep ass hill every day for like two three months straight before we ever touched the ball and you know what the worst part about that shit was we didn't win shit that season either anyway tanjiro is currently fighting for his life against this mountain and he, he's not fucking winning but eventually he does catch his footing and manages to push through it now Uro Kodaki got him on some karate kid shit and then after the cliche training montage now Uro Kodaki was like all right bro you've passed all the trials all that's left for you to do is slice this rock in half and then you can go to the tuning exams <clears throat> i mean the uh, dark tournament <clears throat> i mean final selection so now bro been training for some time you know so long to the point where my man's got a new haircut preset they never really specify how long he had been at it but now look at this shit right here some random comes out of nowhere and just starts beating his ass for no reason this shit is actually crazy and i'm gonna tell you why in a second but cuz was cooking tanjiro with a wooden sword over and over and over and then another random pops up and pretty much just gives tanjiro some pointers and shit right and eventually he does end up beating the guy i know they have names and shit but honestly this is the last time that we see them because as soon as tanjiro beats him they disappear this is what i was talking about just a second ago bro this man has been at that rock for so long that he was seeing ghosts and not only that he was getting his ass handed to him by one come on bro what what are we talking about man anyway he splits the rock gets the cosign from uro kodaki and heads off to the final selection so after what I'm assuming is a long journey, he makes it to this little forest area with these nice ass trees and whatnot. Shit is beautiful, I ain't gonna lie. Anyway, he pulls up to the final selection and it's already people there. Hey though, I just wanna point something out right quick. So y'all see what Tanjiro is wearing, right? Compared to everyone else, it's like two or three other people with colors on. That right there is how you know who's gonna die in the next couple of episodes and who's gonna live. These generic dudes right here are literally about to get packed up and shipped the guy same day. FedEx could never. Nah, but real talk though, imagine what be going through these people's heads when they see someone like Tanjiro roll up. Okay, okay. So I've been practicing my sword swinging, got it all down packed. These other guys look weak as hell. I'm gonna make it out of here just fine. Slay some demons, get some girls, some money. We good. We good. We good. I got this. Hold up. What the fuck? Is this nigga wearing a custom fit? Who is he? Why doesn't he look like the other niggas? No, 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 no. It's not possible, right? This can't be possible. I thought this was my show. This is supposed to be my show. C could it be? I'm a... A background character? So now thing one and thing two are explaining the rules. Welcome to the final selection. Honestly, I have no clue why I'm explaining this to y'all because 90% of you are gonna die anyway. But look, this forest behind us, it's demons in it and they're hungry. So if you want to be a demon slayer, survive seven days. Food and shelter will not be provided. Good luck. Alrighty, here we go. Final selection has begun. Tanjiro is strategizing and shit, but out comes two demons trying to jump. Uh oh, never mind, they beefing. Either way, Tanjiro packs that shit up and sends them to the afterlife. Right after that, though, some random is getting chased by the Musinex monster. Tanjiro tries to step in and ends up cutting bro arms off, right? But Mike Wazowski was not phased. Then he noticed the shiesty mask Tanjiro had on and was like, hey, wait a minute. Is that a fox mask? Oh, don't tell me I'm about to sleep another one of you niggas. <laughs> so as it turns out, Uro Kodaki pretty much made my mans right here the way he is now. And ever since, he's been packing up all his students. But while he's explaining his backstory, 
or some random butts in and is like, No, that's not true. I heard that the demons here die after final selection. So that makes you a liar. Yo, what the fuck, bro? Shut the fuck up. Oh, I was God, literally bro. in the like, middle of my fucking show. backstory. Fuck. Then my boy revealed that he slept Ghost Boy and Ghost Girl and actually went into detail on how he dropped them. And that made Times real mad as hell. So he started chopping him up like he was on Hell's Kitchen Press for Tom. Damn. Bruh hit him so hard, cutting the Soul Society was like, oh shit. But after yet another wake up moment, Tanjiro was back to cooking. I'm telling you, man, this show is convenient as fuck. We don't get to that later, though. Booker Man was like, man, he not even cold for real, bruh. I got too much neck for him to kill me, a bitch. Shut that shit up and keep God in your life, fuck, nigga. Then we get a little montage of Tanjiro demon slaying, and now he's won the game, I guess. I, I don't know. And what do you know? It's just as I said. Only the colorful ones made it out. What did I just tell y'all? Then thing one and two come back like, oh, damn, y'all finished? I didn't even think y'all was gonna make it for real. Uh, shit, we would've had trophies, but you know, times is tough. Inflation hitting everybody these days, but we did get you guys some new fits. So, come up and get one, and uh, pick one of these stones up here, and we gonna make your sword, and we can get that shit to you in 10 to 15 business days. Oh, also, y'all got these crows and shit. Then this edgelord right here starts fucking tweaking for some reason, but Tondre was like, hey, hey, chill out with that shit, bro. And, and see, this is the worst part about this show being set in, like, the 1800s. Bro had to walk home after getting his ass beat like that, but he does make it back, though. Fast forward about 15 days, and FedEx finally shipped his sword, and Tom Tanjiro opens it up and apparently the sword changes colors depending on the wielder and his turns black right but the delivery man starts tweaking because he really wanted to see a red one no Yo, no 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 no, 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 no then itachi pulls up and gives tanjiro a mission ah go to the city northwest of here they out here snatching bodies for we need you before he heads out though earl kodaki gives him a box to carry nezuko in and they head off now we in the city and shit. Look at my boy doing his job and whatnot. On his bloodhound shit for real. All day too. My boy was cooking. Now it's nighttime, man. You know that's when the freaks come out. And look at this little horny ass liquid blob right here, bro. Bro, watch this little girl get undressed and dragged her under. Like, what the fuck? But you know, Tanjiro was on his ass for real. Demon tried to do the dash, but Tanjiro got that Air Max nose, so ain't shit getting past him. Now the demon fed up with his ass, but but not even cause he's getting his ass beat. Check out what this man's about to say, bro. Verbatim. This girl is 16. She is losing flavor by the minute. What is he cooking? Then another version of him pops up. Is like, yo, chill, bro. We good, yo. He's literally fighting his intrusive thoughts like in our faces. What the fuck? So then nameless character number 35 was like, yo, give me back my girl, dog. And then the demon was like, not gonna lie to you, player. That ain't gonna work. I tore her shit up the other day. I ain't gonna hold you. Then he opens his shirt and bruh got a collection. What are we doing, man? Come on. Where are the cops? CPS? Anybody? Now Tanjiro's dodging these attacks like me dodging spoilers for any Marvel movie ever. But just when he's about to get snuck, Nezuko pops out and starts boxing with one of them. Tanjiro goes underwater and and the demons was talking shit like, yeah, nigga, you and our shit now. You probably can't even breathe, nigga. But clearly they don't realize where my boy trained at, who he trained with, and what his breathing technique is. And it's for that reason that he packs that shit up so effortlessly. Meanwhile, Nezuko is throwing them hard shits. Oh my god! Then Tanjiro comes in for the team combo, finishes that shit off, you know what I'm saying? Man, y'all weak as fuck, bro. Only reason you won cause it's ply and shit. And you lucky Muzan ain't giving me no powers, or I would've been slept your bitch. Shut up, nigga. Now I have some questions for you. What do you know about Michael Jackson? Don't say a Don't word. Say a word. <laughs> Answer me, I said. What do you know about Michael Jackson? Is he really a smooth criminal? Was the kid really not his son? If you talk, you talk your butt is mine. I'm always watching you. I can't tell you, man. I can't tell you. Why? I just can't, man. You, you don't understand. I, I can't, bro. I just can't. Why not, you stupid bastard? Did you not just hear me? I said... So yeah, he's dead. The son comes up. He, he boxes up Nezuko and gets ready to go. But I just want to point something out here before we move on. So bruh saved the girl, right? But it's not the girl that this dude was looking for. It's a completely different person. But clearly he doesn't give two shits about this because Tanjiro was like, okay now, I've won. So take this girl home. And Buddy right here is rightfully confused. He was like, I've never seen this girl a day in my life. I don't, I don't know this bitch from Adam, dog. Yo, come back. You can't just leave me with some girl and run off. That's what I'm doing though. Toodles. So as Tanjiro was walking, his crow told him to go explore the city so he could unlock the rest of the map for us. And now my boy just walking around town, chilling, and then while he was getting some food, he sent somebody had not shower and decided to go investigate. And before I continue, bruh, I just want to say again, this gotta be one of the most convenient animes of all time. Because what are the fucking odds that in search for the origin of the smell, he finds Michael fucking Jackson, aka Muzan, just chilling out in the open. What type of fuckery is this? Not even that. 
bro was out in the open with his wife and kids. What? Then the king of pop snuck some random and caused the distraction. Then Dip got Tanjiro fighting literal demons in public while he called an Uber for the fam. Then for no reason, he just decides to walk down this alleyway and conveniently, there is three drunk people just chilling there. And of course, my man right here was trying to be a comedian. He called him pale, but in this universe, Michael Jackson gets very upset when you talk about his vitiligo. Like, like to the point where he violently unalives you. And then packs up your friends just because they were there. Hashtag no witnesses, you dig? Then he summoned his goons and put in that call. He was like, hey, I can't have niggas running around here knowing where I'm at. Find that big head ass boy and take him off the map. Now! Meanwhile, Tanjiro gets some help from this lady, and, and a little later, she summons him and Nezuko to her spot. I'm, I forgot her name, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, but I, that's because I be trying to do these shits off memory. But basically, she provides some good explanation on Nezuko's condition and whatnot, as well as what Tanjiro can do to, like, stop it. She also gives some secrets about Muzan and where she stands with him. And, and to end off this dialogue, she basically asks Tanjiro to go around collecting the blood of demons he kills in the future to send them to her so they can do tests and shit. But right after they're finishing their conversation, the spot gets raided by a dodgeball player and some with no eyes and you know they're demons so they immediately get to throwing hands she threw one at tanjiro and he blocked it but like i said most convenient show ever so of course she could control them shits even when somebody didn't caught them so that doesn't work oh well, what the fuck is that a type then dodge bitch conveniently reveals that she has like eight arms and several balls and she starts throwing them shits and typically in this situation a character is dodging these with no problem but not only is tanjiro trying to protect these two his weave gang membership hasn't been approved just yet. But my man's right here gave him a guest pass and he started dodging them shits immediately. Then the greatest Pokemon of all time, Nezuko, uses shin kick to distract the blonde guy while Tanjiro chops up the dodgeball merchant, the Aki way. However, that doesn't really work because no sight man sends Nezuko back to Tanjiro like he got the wrong order or something. So they switch opponents and now Tanjiro is fighting his ass and starts getting cooked even worse. <laughs> like he's getting his ass beat by directions from every direction. But for the fourth time, this show is hella convenient. Because how the fuck he figure out how to beat this man in 10 seconds? He started combining forms and shit. But that's another thing. We never saw a bro learn one form. All we know is that he could cut a rocket too. How is he this skilled? I will say though, I'll let this one slide. Because I did not feel like watching three episodes of Tanjiro it. versus the Demon C team. So, meanwhile, Nezuko and Dodge bitch are playing table hockey. But with like a ball. They going kick for kick. But Miss Lady right here was like, alright, that's enough screen time for you. We need to move the story forward. And just poisons her. Which begs the question. If she she was able to drop her so effortlessly. Why were we watching Nezuko put her body on the line for like five minutes? No, no, no. Better yet, why were we watching like an episode and a half of this shit? Why couldn't she just pack her up at the start? So anyway, now that that's over, they heal up at her crib and head off to go get some more samples for her. But then they run into a certain Riz God. Oh, hell nah, bro. Look at this shit. My man's right here is doing that TikTok trend, bro. He has negative game. This is one of the worst displays I've ever seen, yo. Nah, look at the grip he has on his arms, because this man is desperate. He over here in tears begging for this girl, bro. He just like some of y'all, man. That man got the slightest bit of attention from a girl and let his mind run faster than Usain Bolt. And she finally got tired of that shit and exposed his ass. She said, I only came over here because you were curled up crying like a bitch on the side of the road. Don't nobody like your ass. Damn. Nah, but in all seriousness, though, I will say this much. This character trope right here got to be my least favorite. Like, it's tolerable if the character is only like this to one person. But if this is their, like, whole personality, that shit is really annoying. I'm looking at you, Mineta. Fucking hate that dude. But yeah, now he's raging at Tanjiro for scaring the hoes away. But I, I guess he doesn't know. So they decide to walk together and they run up on his little house or whatever. And, and niggas is getting folded out here, you know what I'm saying? Tanjiro trying to sort some shit out. But Noodlehead over here is pissing down his leg and whatnot. Man, he been on the screen for five minutes and I can't stand his ass and then Tanjiro was like you know what bruh just watch the kids while I cook fuck man I gotta go do everything in this fucking show I ain't trying to waste my time on this shit either bruh cause we gotta speed run this whole series I'm, I'm just let y'all know the gist of what happened right now Tanjiro is actually trying to get some shit done this time meanwhile sharp cheddar cheese is pop panicking every time we cut to him then he run up on ah, I, I, I don't even know what the fuck that is and, and then all of a sudden after like two and a half episodes of him being the scariest nigga to ever exist he suddenly locks in and packs this man up with maximum speed efficiency and then immediately goes back to tweaking we got a literal boar hat running around chopping shit meanwhile tanjiro is having the classic main character monologue every mc has when they get their ass beat i can do this by the power of friendship and plot i will win so i can become king of the hokage pirates so apparently this demon is from the dmv because his power is go go music and shit but but tanjiro's smart ass figures him out i would hope so too considering that his forehead is fucking gigantic but he uses off-screen technique number nine and gets that shit the fuck up out of here hey but here we 
we go again with this coincidental shit. Bro, packed them up, right? Got the blood sample. And then out of nowhere, Cat with the bag shows up. Man, what are we doing, dog? Like, let's stop with the tomfoolery, man. So the fight's over now. He got the kids. He's going to get them to safety and go rest up. But then this gremlin is trying to pack up Nezuko. <laughs> this man, Tanjiro, ain't had a break since his sword got delivered, dog. I know his ass was hot. This is three jobs back to back to back with no rest, no low management, nothing. Actually, are they even being properly compensated for this? They got him running around the world boxing for no reason. But nah, as much as I don't really care for Zenitsu's character, this was actually real as hell what he did right here. He protected that box with his life, you know what I'm saying? Got his ass whooped in the process, but still protected that shit. Then Tanjiro hit cut so hard it replayed three different times, and then we got a zoom in on his body like this was Blitz the League. What the hell? Then he started morally beating his ass. My man's is laid out, and Tanjiro talking about, you scum, you piece of shit, how can you call yourself a demon slayer? <laughs> <laughs> I like that shit. Let's go again. What? Come here. I was just playing. Chill. Yo. Yo. Anyway, so Tanjiro's head meets his match, and Pig Boy drops the face reveal, and his name is Inosuke. Then we get 10 minutes of dumbassery from these three, and now the three Stooges are off to the forest. Once they find a place to crash, Inosuke explains that he beat some random Demon Slayer's ass for no reason, and was like, you know what? I kind of like this. Then went to final selection and passed, but he finished first, so he kind of just did without getting his reward and whatnot. Then Nezuko shows up, and of course, the league leader and whole scared is making his presence known. Now it's the next day, and they make it to the forest where they run up on this random right here, right? And he's being controlled by some webs and shit. And right when he's about to explain what's going on, he gets snatched back into the woods, and he was like, Please don't let me die here! Uh, buddy. I hate to break it to you, but if your attire ain't got no color in it, your ass is grass. Zenitsu, of course, is scared shitless, but Inosuke don't give a fuck about life, and Tanjiro trying to get some work done, so, so they go forward. So they run into some more background characters eventually, and finally get an explanation as to what the hell is going on. So apparently, these guys are under control by the Web Warriors and whatnot. Meanwhile, Zenitsu is chilling on the outside, but he casually remembers that if he stays, he can't rizz up Nezuko in the future. Very odd motivation, if you ask me, but whatever. But while that's happening, Inosuke and Tanjiro get pulled up on by this guy right here, and he's like, my mom. Mom's gonna whoop your ass. But Inosuke wasn't having that shit, and he, he found her ass in seconds, and they started heading towards her. Meanwhile, the mother that bro was referring to was pulling the strings and shit, but then my boy pulls up and starts talking crazy. He said, hey, it's some demon slayers coming your way. You better lock the fuck in, because if you don't, you're gonna have to see me, and your ass ain't got no chance fucking with me. Big Rui. So naturally, after like having a panic attack, she starts sending them heavy hitters, but you see, this is the first time they gave Tanjiro some real help in the show, so him and Inosuke cooked that shit quicker than some Uncle Ben's. See, this is the shit I fucking love right here, man. Look at this, man. Two motherfuckers getting shit done. Packed her ass up so quickly and so beautifully. So while these two are putting in work, the most insufferable character in the show, <clears throat> I mean Zenitsu, was spending all that time bullshitting and then he ran up on man spider right and, and he's tripping out as usual so man spider thought he had an easy win ha 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 this nigga is so clearly scared out of his mind i wonder which way i should finish him should i do it slowly or should i end it quick so many choices so little time Ooh, i know i'll let him worry himself to death Look at him. He's running and crying. He'll die of exhaustion and then I'll just eat him. <laughs> Look at this shit. It's pitiful. I should just watch him die. He's not even worth eating. How bold of you to assume I would allow that. What? Thunder breathing first. Wait, 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 no, let's talk this. So while that happened, Tanjiro and Inosuke agree to split up and shit, but before they can, this ugly ass piece of shit comes and fucks up the whole situation. So now it's just Inosuke by himself. What is he prepared to do about it? Find out after this ad. We not that big yet, bro. Damn. He gets his ass beat pretty badly, but at the end, Giyu shows up and ends that shit before Inosuke can get put on a shirt. So then cut back to Zenitsu, and he's on point one HP, but then E-Girl shows up and starts to heal him. And while that's going on, Tanjiro stumbles upon Rui abusing the shit out of his sister for some odd ass reason. And you know, Tanjiro being Tanjiro, he takes offense to it, and he was like, wait, aren't y'all on the same side? What the fuck is wrong with you, bro? And Rui was like, shut up, you imbecile. And here we go, Mr. Compassion here trying to have another ideology off with a fucking demon, and then some random ass background character that tries to make shit about him. Step back, Tanjiro. I've got this. I'm the hero in this story. Face ass. Chopped his shit up. That's what his ass get for trying to control the narrative. But Rui was feeling big. He got his chest all out. And now he was like, you have so much to say. You know that? You want to just run that by me again? Rui's still talking big shit and whatnot. Then he goes for the kill. But Nezuko blocks it and eats that shit. Cuts her deep as hell, too. Now Rui is tweaking. And the other demon's like, yo, my nigga, what, what is you on? You just sliced her like a pizza. So then Rui told her to get the fuck on. And then he went right back to tweaking. Nah, son, these demons really out here wildin', cause why do bruh got a family kink, bro? Look at this shit, man. He's getting bricked up at the thought of having a sister. What fuck type of shit is this? Then he was like, boy, 
Bring your ass out here so we can have a talk. You're going to give me your sister right now. Or what? Nigga, what? Or, or I'll beat your motherfucking ass, that's what. Hand her over. No. Then Spider-Man pulls at Thanos and just takes her himself. Then Tanjiro charges in again, and not only did his Bankai break, he tied Nezuko up. Now he's talking about teaching her a lesson. Yo, what the fuck? What is his plan? She's like 14. I'ma let her bleed so she can learn to be obedient. What are we talking about? Hey, check this out, bro. This is how I knew bro was crazy. So he's beating Tanjiro ass, right? Then look at what he says right here, bro. Damn, I'm beating your ass so much. You know what? Come get you on. Weave. Ha! Ah, ah. Ha! Tanjiro tries to cut him, but ends up getting punted back to the opposing tree for a touchback. Now he back to torturing Nezuko. Man, I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. He's looking at at least 75 to life right now. Anyway, Tanjiro starts chopping shit up, but then Demon Man wasn't going. And now we get to this random ass cutscene, bro. And you know what? I ain't going for it no more. This man done lost so much blood, got separated from the group his sister is on like 3 HP what are the fucking odds that he just happens to remember that his family knows sun breathing and mind you he's never practiced it or even displayed traits of possessing it up to this point like yeah this shit look cool but it don't make no fucking sense I ain't even gonna hold y'all like I can't even narrate this shit this is art nigga damn the animators was working on this like they rent was due man damn which considering the work conditions that animators in Japan experience in comparison to the lackluster compensation they receive for their work I'm probably not even wrong like, like it's really fucked up actually imagine working for months on end just to receive like a hundred dollars shit's not cool but you know what is cool though this team combo the setup was beautiful the slice even more and that is game time tanjiro wins so now my bro think he in the clear, but then this e-girl shows up again and tries to kill Nezuko, but then Giyu stopped her. And as it turns out, old girl is a Hashira just like Waterboy over here. And basically her deal is that Nezuko is a demon, therefore she should be killed. But then Tanjiro was like, no, she's my sister. And then she was like, oh no, that's so sad. Let me play you a song on the world's smallest violin. If you thought I was going to let that slide, move around before I kill you too. And then Giyu was like, all right, that's where I'm going to have to stop you. The only person that's going to watch the fuck out is you. And then she was like, all right. Alright, here you go again. This is why nobody likes your ass. Oh, damn, for real? I ain't know that. Anyway, Giyu lets Tanjiro escape. These two face off, but he not really fucking with it, though. He just trying to stall for time. Meanwhile, E-Girl number two shows up and sneaks Tanjiro. Nezuko gets up and does the dash. Then she decks this nigga in the head for no reason. Chases her. But then everybody gets word that Tanjiro and Nezuko are supposed to be taken into custody and whatnot. So everybody gets packed up and shit back to HQ. Now we in some random guy's backyard and, and Tanjiro wakes up rightfully confused and then one of the workers starts fucking tweaking for no reason. Talking about, you're in the presence of the Hashira, the nine strongest swordsmen alive, bow down, show respect, like alright nigga we get it, they be fighting, get the glicks out your mouth bro. No funny shit, dick riding nine people at the same time is fucking insane and he not even getting no type of reaction from them either, they just standing there talking about Tanjiro. Hmm, man look at this ugly ass nigga bro, no drip, no nothing. Like, you really a dickhead for a demon no slayer, funny but shit. he was protecting a demon. Like, did he not read the fucking terms and conditions? And your face fuck. is fat as fuck, bro. Like, like head, big head as ass fuck. boy. Like, didn't he realize he was supposed to be slaying demons, like, not helping them? Dumbass alert. Hey, you shut your mouths, okay? That girl isn't just a demon. That's my little sister, so don't hurt her. <laughs> Nigga, don't nobody give a fuck about your sister. Oh, my God. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 it's like... It's like it's awesome. That's funny as hell, then unhinged Toshiro starts bullying Tanjiro, but he wasn't gone. Like he said, y'all got so much to say about my fucking head. Take this. That shit hurt, don't it, bitch? Then motherfucking Neji walked through the door like, what's cracking? Now they playing Among Us. No, no, no. Hold on. Let me cook, though. Hella colorful people, right? One nigga been moving funny, and a lot of people ain't fucking with it, right? They're literally at a meeting discussing whether or not to kill slash vote him out. This is a game of Among Us, bro. I'm telling y'all. So now Gomu Gomu no Neji was like, all right, guys, I hear y'all are not rocking with Tanjiro, but, but, but He's clear, okay? Bro, what? Oh, bro, I I do, bro. You're fucking what? Yo, one agree. mic, one mic. Look, he has several alibis, all right? Earl Kodaki and Gyu said they ain't never seen Nezuko snap somebody's neck. She's been a demon for two years, and you know that's convincing evidence. So unless y'all got something better than that, I think we should skip this round. Sanemi was not having that shit, though. He tried to fucking bait Nezuko, but she was not going. So they have no choice but to let them slide this round. And then afterwards, Shinobu took them back to her crib to heal up some more. And as for what happened there, well, they kind of just <laughs> fuck around for like three episodes. I mean, Tanjiro was really the only one taking it serious, learning how to better control his breathing and whatnot. He also gets really good at this cup game and starts rising up this girl right here. We also get to learn a little bit about Shinobu's backstory and as it turns out, she wasn't always the nicest person. She was actually a tier one hater before her sister met the Wu. And well, that's gonna do it for this video, man. I hope y'all enjoy it. Yo, what the fuck are you doing? I thought you said you was gonna cover the whole thing. I just did. Oh, like you just said at the start you was gonna cover the whole show. Like we got a whole nother season to go. What?
Yeah, bro, it's a, it's a lot of good shit in this next season, too, so it's like, you, you ain't done yet, my boy. <laughs> Fuck is wrong with y'all niggas, man? I tell y'all to tighten up like three times, and every last one of y'all folded. He is a fucking Mizunoto, the lowest rank, and yet some fucking how y'all are still dropping more than NBA Youngboy. The fuck is y'all doing, man? I keep getting asked by these lower demons to get a promotion, and I be telling them, nah, man, we already got heavy hitters. But yet, here y'all are, wet in the bed again. Damn, it's cats out here that want y'all spot, son. But sir, uh, ma'am, uh, Muzan, I, I, I don't know what to fucking call you, but just please give us more no, time. No, 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 I'm not going for that no more, Randy. That's the same shit y'all said last week. You can't fool me no more. I'm familiar with your game, and it don't need to be played no more. You know what? Y'all off the team. You cut. <sighs> fucking imbeciles, man. You there. Go hunt this big-headed ass child down. You look like you can get the job done. Well, what makes you say that, Lord Muzan? I'm, I'm just a regular character. Plot, I mean, uh, <clears throat> my powerful judgment, of course. Uh, so, uh, yeah, go kill this nigga, please! Alrighty, here we go, season two! Wait, this is a movie. You just fucking shut it! Anyway, the Three Stooges are back at it. This time, they're summoned to the Mugen train to go assist Rengoku, one of the nine Hashira. They arrive to the station, but these two dumbasses don't really get what's going on, and this is exactly what I meant when I said living in the mountains was a smooth brain idea at the top of the video. Not a bum-ass police always fucking with some shit that don't need to be fucked with. Dumbasses are talking about, call the cops! Like, bro, look at your fit! You are the cops! What the fuck? Anyway, they meet up with flaming Hot Cheetos, man, who had been packing up demons before Tanjiro and them even got there. Check this shit out right here. All right, on my mark, we'll fight. <laughs> I'm gonna kill this guy. Ready? Go! I win. Anyway, now my boy on the train eating his food and whatnot, and Tanjiro and the boys run into him. And while these two bullshit around, Tanjiro tries to find out more about his sun breathing powers. He thought it was fire breathing, that's why he asked Rengoku, but he was like, nah, bro, we ain't the same. Not in an insulting way, he just has fire breathing and that's sun breathing, you know? But we do learn that sun breathing is the OG technique and that all others originate from it. Anyway, while they're getting their tickets punched, a demon appears, but Rengoku cooks that shit. Another one shows up and it's the same result. And now these three start meat munching for some reason. Like, they saw him kill one demon and started calling him big bro now they all sleeping and shit but out of nowhere this hand comes out and packs the constructor for not killing these four so he gets these kids to handle the business and, and pretty much the hand was like okay so they're under my genjutsu at the moment just wait a little while for it to set in and then stab the ass then we get about an episode and a half of tanjiro reliving the past and shit and you know he was like getting reacclimated to family life and whatnot I'm gonna keep it a stack with y'all, bruh. Basically, they're in the infinite Tsukuyomi, so of course the Rizzler is dreaming about being with Nezuko. And Melio's, I mean, Anosuke's dream is essentially what I would imagine taking shrooms would be like. Be like me, kids, don't do drugs. Rengoku, on the other hand, is dreaming about his home life, and one of these little shits comes in for the kill, but he shuts that shit down real quick. <laughs> like, look at this shit, man. Look at that gorilla grip ass grab, bruh. Like, this girl is seven, so he out of pocket. And here we go, folks. Our first coincidence of season two the demon who retained the mindset of a human. Human, never fell asleep and burns Tanjiro back to reality. It doesn't get any more blatant than this dog. He starts trying to get out of there, but his family was calling him back. But hey, look though, on some real nigga shit. Like this whole scene is literally me every time I see a fan duel commercial. That shit be calling me back like his brother right here. I mean, it is tempting though. All I need for the 16 leg two mil payout is for Russell Westbrook to hit four threes in a game. You know, it's not impossible. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, he realizes that the only way to get out of the dream world is to Hannah Baker himself, so he does just that. Now Tanjiro and Nezuko trying to wake up the others, but then these badass little kids start tripping because Tanjiro was fucking with the bag, but Tanjiro Jordan was like, you know what, fuck these kids, and just sleeps all four of them. So then Mr. I Get Shit Done pulls up on a demon, and basically they was like, I love blood, I love pleasing you, son. I just want to cause despair and pain. Anyway, they start boxing and she unleashed this jutsu with this long ass name. Hey yo, Hashirama, is that you? It pretty much was the exact same one as the shit Itachi put Sasuke through back in OG Naruto, if y'all remember. But that shit didn't do nothing but make Tanjiro mad. He was on some Dom Toretto family shit. He chopped that shit up like cheese. Then the demon just pretty much became one with the train, I guess. And, and then Inosuke popped out already on go. And right after that, fresh off injured reserve came Zenitsu along with Nezuko and they started cooking. And I ain't gonna lie, bro, this is the first time Mac and Cheese was locked in from the jump. I like it though, no cap. Then Ringo who shows up and helps these two while Jordan and Pippin go to fight the Kizuki. Like
Like, look at this shit, bro. You can't tell me the chemistry ain't on 2000. I ain't seen a dynamic duo like this since Shaq and Kobe. Matt and Jeff, me and not uploading. But then the demon starts using all these eyes, and the Genjutsu starts beating their ass like they got it off I'm themselves dead. just to stay focused. You know, I know that shit was annoying. Now, what I'm about to say next could be a coincidence, but I think this one was kind of cool, so I let it slide. But look, because Inosuke had that mask on, the demon didn't really know where he was looking, so Tanjiro told him to throw the oop. And well, uh, I mean, this was the cleanest tag team I've ever seen. They chopping shit up like a slow song. All the meat fell off the bone, and Tanjiro got that dog in him, so you know he chewed that shit up. Damn, I ain't gonna lie, that was kind of a bar. So because Tanjiro hit that move, the train crashed, and now he's on one HP, because he also got shanked by the conductor, because the demon was his shroom plug, and Tanjiro got him to fuck up out of here. Anyway, Rengoku shows up and was like, bro, good job, bro. As soon as we get everyone to safety, we can get ready to head back. What a nice way for this shit to end, man. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. This is anime, so two good things can't happen in a row. Cue the music. Yeah, you guessed it. It wouldn't be a movie without a boss fight. Enter Akaza. Look at bruh eyes. What that shit say? Upper three. Them boys face to face with one of them ones. He ain't playing no games with him either. He trying to get shit cracking, but Rengoku got quick draw Hall of Fame. Back your pale ass up. Akaza was like, okay, okay, you out here. You know, we could use you for sure, so what do you say? Nah, I'm good. What? Like, like I said, I I'm good. I, I don't want to do that. No, like you be strong as fuck though. I'm going to say it one more time, bro. I'm straight. Join us. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. No. That's the oldest trick in the book. Damn it. He was like, fine, you hard-headed fuck. Opened up the skill tree on his ass. Then got to it. They throwing them shits. Not gonna lie, this camera is making my head hurt. So y'all listen to these sound effects while I go throw up. Boom. Bang. Trance. Kablooey. Bow, bow, bow. These niggas is throwing haymakers, man. Nah, but Akaza is still winning though. Because look at how focused Rengoku is. But Akaza, on the other hand, is still working on his sales pitch. Rengoku is trying, but every time he give Akaza a good one, Akaza come harder. Yo, hey, yo. <laughs> Alright, fine. You got me there. Anyway, Rengoku. Goku finally gets him off him, and now Akaza is just standing there like, damn, is that it? And Rengoku was like, shut the fuck up, nigga, flame on. Cut him, morphed into a flame dragon. This shit is clean. Akaza matches the energy, so now it's time for the final clash. He cut through, bro, like he had a hot butter knife. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. Damn. I ain't gonna lie, I forgot Akaza could regenerate, man. It's looking like he's not about to beat the donut allegations. But then Rengoku is like, well, fuck it. If I die, you're coming with me, bitch. Give me your fucking net. Sun coming out. Tables have turned. But then Akaza pulled an Aaron and broke off his wrist and did the fucking dash. Tanjiro in the back like, nigga, that shit is weak. Why are you ducking the wands like this, man? Stop being a bitch. Get back here and block. <laughs> and fuck all that, I'm gone. And we get this little sad scene right here, right? everybody crying. And, and you know what? Let me just say this. I mean, yeah, it was sad, but like prior to this part of the story, we had no connection to this man. Like, I understand Tanjiro and them being sad about it, but like, I can't get sad about it. This is the first time we've seen him in action, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's move on. So, uh, yeah, he's dead. Streets is mourning, and then Akaza runs back to Muzan. What's good, boss? I couldn't find that strain he was looking for, but I did fold a Hashira, so I, I feel like the mission was successful, you know? Aren't you gonna say good job? Sick of this shit, man. Why do the writers give me such fucking idiot subordinates, man? Damn! Congratulations on doing your fucking job, I guess. You were supposed to kill him. Never mind that. I need that strain. Not only that, but three other slayers survived. Why didn't you take them off the map too? You know what? Never mind that. Just just get out. My dad's coming upstairs. Then Akaza goes off and rages because Tanjiro called him a coward and he didn't beat the allegations. Now we back at Shinobu's crib, but Tanjiro decides to pay Rengoku's family a visit. His dad is kind of a dickhead. Bro is abusive to his other son while trashing Rengoku's legacy like what the hell? But just like all of Tanjiro's problems in the past, he just headbutts them away. Chops it up with his little brother and now he's on his way back. Then we get another 10 minutes of these three bullshitting. And then some random demon shows up and Tanjiro shuts that down. Then we cut to this nigga right here taking some of the girls at Shinobu's crib with him. And as far as I know, these is kids. Like what the no fuck good. is he planning? Tanjiro went for his signature move but my man's got gone then future is like yo i need them for a mission but tanjiro was still trying to have an ideology off and future was like man see this is why we weak now man who is weak me and my niggas are ready for whatever what niggas these, these niggas! niggas oh shit what the hell i ain't gonna lie that was kind of clean all right fine you can come along i hope y'all in the cross dress enough what never mind forget i said that all right, so now we in Las Vegas, and Uzui pretty much explains what pimping is, and they get to his spot, and he was like, all right, y'all gotta become sex workers. What? No, no way, man. Uh, no, 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 no way I'm doing that. Hello there. I heard you were looking for some new woman to add to the roster. I'd like to offer these three lovely ladies here. Bro, these are obviously guys. I know, but we have to move the story forward, so just take them. 
So essentially, Tanjiro, Zenitsu, and Inosuke are plants, and their task is to try and find anything about the demon that lurks around the entertainment district at night. Now we get about 20 minutes of them blending in, and to the surprise of the audience, the person who actually finds a clue about the demon first is Inosuke. And then Zenitsu actually runs up on her, and she was about to get shit cracking, but then some randoms walked in and saved him. So all he ended up getting was verbally abused and clocked in the head. Ironically enough, Tanjiro was the only one bullshit in the entire time, but after all that happened in season one, he earned the right to do so. Anyway, word gets out that the head mistress or whatever is moving funny, and now one of the ladies confronts her, but the demon wasn't going, so she dropped her ass from 30 feet out. Hashtag no witnesses, you dig? Then Muzan pulls up and was like, Hey, my nigga, I seen that shit, bro. You, you already know, for you real. already know. Hey, but check this out, though. Don't let up. They on your ass, so stay locked in, you know what I'm saying? Job's not finished. Hee <laughs> hee. So now it's the next day, and everybody was supposed to meet up and relay info, but Zenitsu went MIA, and Uzui was really just trying to get his girl back, so now he's bummed out, and he's like... Damn, man. As a matter of fact, bro, y'all niggas can go, bro. Look at his face, man. As a former sufferer of heartbreak, I know exactly what this means. So after that, Tanjiro was trying to get shit going. He put his pink slip in and was like, Um, yeah, I, I really wasn't even supposed to do this shit. Like, I'm actually a guy. I knew that. Yeah, so that's why I... Wait, what? Yeah, there's uh, no woman alive with a voice that deep. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. I'm actually going to leave, too. I'm about to go get married. Oh, for real? That's what's up. Well, congrats on that. I I'm gonna get going, though. See ya. All right now. What a nice boy. Yeah, I know, right? Too bad for you, though. You'll never see him again. Yes, that's right. I'm leaving. Yes, you are leaving. Earth. <laughs> that was fun. Anyway, Tanjiro and his super nose finds Daki, and he runs up on her like, Hey, let that woman go! Ugly ass out my face, nigga. But y'all already know Tanjiro was not going down that easy. So then they throw hands and whatnot, and she was talking big shit, but he was like, fuck all that talk, bitch. Square up. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. He ain't, he ain't playing around with her ass this time. He brought out the flames on her ass, but she shut that shit down. Now he's going into cardiac arrest or something, but he magically locks back in last second, and they start throwing hands again. Meanwhile, Uzumi found his girl, and now he's trying to cook up, but then he magically runs into literally everybody else, and they fight like a piece of Doki's clothes or something like that. And come to find out, bruh, this man don't got one girl, he has three, and they are cordial with one another. This is Rizus Christ, the Riz Man, Reed Rizards, Riz Ruto, Kyle Rizma, player for the Washington Rizards. All right, I'm done. I had to get that out the way. So back to Tanjiro and Daki. They exchanging blows, but she gets a random ass power up and just fucks everybody on the street up. Now Tanjiro's trying to use talk no jutsu, but that skill doesn't come equipped with his anime. So he was like, all right, fine. Let's just get negative. Starts cooking her ass like a dad on 4th of July. My God, look at the quickness. He's locked in. Holy fucking. And another heart attack. Daki was like, well, that was rather impressive. However, I'm afraid your insanity run is over. Take the hell. Nezuko punted her shit. It's about to get sick. Come on, man. Can y'all not fall for two seconds? Nezuko somehow ate that shit and it went through puberty, I guess. I, I don't know. But what I do know is that she kicked the dog shit out of Daki. Left a footprint on that hole like she was a dinosaur. Let's go, bro. I've been sick of her ass since episode three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck, my voice is killing me. Oh damn, she done lost control. She about to fuck up the whole situation. Bro, I am sick of this coincidental shit. He was just dead damn near. How did he manage to move? Ah, shit. Doki came to get her lick back. It's over. Okay, I ain't gonna lie. That was clean as hell. Now, these two is arguing. Tanjiro singing lullabies on the ground. Everything has gone to complete shit. Then Daki puts in that call, and then this monstrosity emerges. Oscar the Grouch looking ass, interesting build ass, ugly ass, body built like a shovel. When they made them commercials about sending food overseas to hungry kids, that was his address in the fucking farm print, bro. Boy, hell no. Nah. Then she tried to pull the harassment card, like we don't got six episodes of incriminating footage on her. Like, come on, bro. Then anime Oscar the Grouch starts complaining because Uzui looks better than him, and Uzui was like, yeah, bro, I'm out here. I actually got three wives. What? Then Uzui blows up the spot and was like, all right, let's get cracking. He's getting 2v1 right now and he's holding his own but then the real niggas show up and now it's really about to get serious they exchanging words but Zenitsu was like man fuck all that talk let's go started frying her shit now it's an all out brawl Uzui and Yutaro throwing fucking haymakers man this shit is getting crucial bro oh shit he done unleashed the technique on them sound breathing they, they going so fast I can't keep up man shit Tanjiro is trying to be helpful but he doesn't know he's cooked it, it's over for him Uzui on the other hand is locked the fuck in sweating his balls off right now no cap you Taro ain't no bot either, but wife number two comes in with the third party, and here comes Tanjiro with that weak ass swing. Uzui had to kick his ass back. 
Utaro regenerates and then Uzui pulls out the sound breather form 4th of July. That's the third party Sinatru and gets pulled up on by Skin and Bones, but Tanjiro pulls up with the water fire combo and shut that shit down. Now he's caught up with Daki and him, Zenitsu, and Inosuke start cooking. I ain't seen a big three this locked in since Ron Wade and Bosch. I ain't gonna hold y'all. They cook her shit. Inosuke grabs her head and runs off. Now, hey, look, bro. I, I know we in the heat of battle right now, but uh, what is he cooking? Yeah, damn! Tactical nuke incoming! It's over! Whole block high. Not a metaphor. The street is dead ass on fire. Inosuke is on his way back to the lobby. Zenitsu is trapped. Uzui is out. They are finished. And Utaro starts shit talking. Damn, nigga. Your crew is finished. It's clips now, bro. We don't even gotta kill them. We can just let them die for real, too. You weak as hell, you know that. All that boxing we just did in your ass didn't contribute not one bit. Yet here you are, having the audacity to be the last one standing. It's really pitiful, actually. Wait a minute. Hold on. You've got something on your hand. Oh, <laughs> Damn, you know what? I feel sorry for you, bruh. You know what? Get you on. Go on. You can do it. Don't run. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. Full rocks is crazy. Ah! I'm going to give you one chance. Become a demon, and I'll spare you. Wait a minute. There's no way. You aren't gonna headbutt me. I watch film, you know. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, fuck. I'm on your fucking ass, hell? bro. Oh, oh, fuck that. Why you breathing? First born. What? Mac and Cheese with the comeback. Daki is on the ropes. Tanjiro is battling back against Utaro, but Utaro is still cooking. Is this the end? And you know what else a man does? What? He says, give me my theme music. Who's we back off IR? Let's go to work. He said, we is not the Chargers. Fuck a tie. We winning this shit right now. He is running through that attack like Marshall and Lynch. Now him and Gutaro going hit for hit. This is the hardest shit I have ever seen in my entire life. I am on the edge of my seat like Daniel Cromier and Joe Rogan at a UFC match, but hold up. This shit get even better, man. Hold on, hold on. Let me catch my breath. I wanted to do something special for this fight. <sighs> so I figured, why not go inside the mind of a Tanjiro Kamado? This is why I say I'm one of the coldest characters in anime, man. I have one of the most best fighting styles in anime history, bruh. Look at this shit. Tanjiro running up. This probably the last play of the game. But dog, earlier though, Uzui got stabbed in the stomach. How is he boxing with an impaled stomach? Look at this nigga holding his shit open, dog. He put the team on his back. Let's go inside the mind of a Tanjiro Kamado. Dog, I gotta do this shit. I put the team on my fucking back. My jaw is broke. I don't know how I'm fighting right now, but I do this shit for Demon Slayer. Oh shit, Yutaro, one of the most strongest demons in the 12 Kizuki. But I put the team on my back though. Fuck it, you can't stop me. Slice his neck, game time. I pray to God y'all got that reference, man. Oh fuck. So both siblings get decapitated at the same time, resulting in their defeat. Now they're arguing over whose fault it is, and then we get like a 15 minute backstory. But I'm here to tell you right now, folks, we don't care. They did it, man. They fucking did it. Against all odds, they beat an upper rank. Let this be a lesson, folks, man. Real niggas never lose. Oh God, no cap. And it wouldn't be a proper Tanjiro fight if he didn't try to have an ideology off. They over there dying and shit, and he's still trying to talk some sense into these niggas. Like, what? What the fuck are they gonna do with that information, Tanjiro? They're seconds away from death. But alas, everyone is safe. Although, I will say, there is no way in fucking hell Inosuke should be alive right now. That whole shifting organ shit is the icing on this coincidental ass cake, man. So now everybody's having a nice hug. Uzui hangs up his jersey and becomes a family man. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. I, I just want to thank y'all for watching this video, bruh. This shit was not easy to make whatsoever. Extremely taxing mentally, I'm not gonna lie. And physically too. I don't. I can't count how many times I had to stop because I was short on breath. Maybe I need to work on my total concentration breathing. <laughs> Face ass. But alas, it is finished. I hope y'all watch the whole thing for real too, bruh. But I mean, I, I don't really care either way because you know, my pockets ain't sweating. And, you know, we still getting paid out here. We getting that money. Um, I, I do want to apologize to y'all for taking such long breaks. Um, I, I would explain it now. But I'm not gonna do that because we're like pushing an hour at this point. So I think I'll make a video in a couple days and just post it and explain everything there. But alas, thank you all for watching this video. Like I'm, I'm extremely grateful. Um, yeah, I'll see y'all next video, man. Peace. Wait, we still have to do seven deadly season. No, one. no, shut the fuck. You are a